Welcome back. Thanks so much for returning, and if you subscribe to the channel, I greatly appreciate it. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to load Lightburn onto your Mac computer. It's actually very quick and simple when you know what to expect as each window pops up. However, if you're like me, you probably watched several YouTube videos on what it's supposed to look like when it loads to that Mac. In fact, most of the videos you'll see is when they're loading it onto a Windows-based PC. That's what happened to me. It appears that Lightburn, like many other companies, has continued to improve its product. And there's one big difference in this most recent release, or perhaps in the last few releases, I'm going to show you today. I'm Gord Potter, and you're watching LaserNug. One of the benefits of YouTube, of course, is anytime you need to do something, no matter what it is, you know, repairing a pipe, trying to <laughs> download software to a computer when you're not very computer literate, there's always going to be at least one YouTube video that's going to help you. A DIY video or something that'll walk you through. One of the challenges, though, is that a lot of times those videos are several years old and technology changes quick. Your Mac OS updates constantly. Lightburn has clearly made a lot of improvements over the years to their software. And so you may find that after you've followed a couple of videos to get the feel for what you're going to see on the screen, it ends up looking very different. And in this case, I'm not sure when, if it was recently or this year or in the last month, Lightburn has added another step which was not resident in any of those other YouTube videos I saw. And it kind of stopped me. I was eventually to get the information off of Thunder Laser. And I think just recently they've issued an updated video. It's super simple, super quick. I'm going to show you what to do. You're going to need a little bit of information. Whatever brand or model of laser you purchased, if it hasn't arrived, you should be able to look the user guide up online or at least find out from the manufacturer. You're going to need the working space dimensions and you're going to need to know what kind of controller it uses. Because what you're actually going to do today is you're going to create a fake device in Lightburn in order to allow the software to work in the absence of having the laser here and properly added to Lightburn. So in other words, you can download the free trial, or if you've already bought the license, you can download it to the computer and begin working in it before your laser even comes, which is of course what a lot of folks do, including myself. You don't have to have it physically connected, but Lightburn requires that you add a device, i.e. your laser system, in order for it to begin working on your computer. Let's walk through it. So just to begin, I want to show you for reference which version of the Mac OS I'm running right now. It's currently the end of December 2023, and it, you can see here I'm on Sonoma 14.2. Now I'm just going to jump on the internet, pull up the Lightburn site. And you'll see right here on the front page, you've got a download of a free trial. I'm going to click download trial. As you scroll down, you'll see that Lightburn is smart enough to see that I have a Mac computer and it's highlighted the Mac OS version for the trial, but you'll see your Windows programs or Linux will be right there for you. I'm going to download my app or the DMG file. You'll see in the top right corner, the DMG file shows up in my downloads. I click it. It'll open up. I'm going to take that file and I'm going to drop it onto my applications folder. And now it's on my Mac. So I'll go down to my finder, go into my applications folder, and I'll scroll up and I should see the Lightburn app right there. Double click it. It's the first time, so Mac is checking to make sure it's okay to go. Once I open it up, although I've already bought a license, I'm going to take advantage of the 30-day free trial. You click start your free trial, and that's all it takes. At least that's what I thought. <laughs> this is just your help and notes, which you can get later off of the toolbar if you'd like. You click OK, and right here, it's going to ask you to create a device in the software. In other words, it's asking you to connect or fill in the information for your laser, but you don't have your laser yet. 
It's, and even if you did, it might not be connected and it doesn't need to. You just need to populate a device, even though it's not connected. If you try not to put in a device, Lightburn will not allow you to use the program. So here's what we need to do. We're going to create manually. I'm going to scroll up this list. In my case, I have a Thunderbolt and I know it uses a Ruida controller. I'm going to click next. The easiest way to create this fake device is to use your serial USB option. Click next. I can name it something. I could have just left it, but I think I named it test. I did. It's going to ask you for the dimensions of the work area. So I just jumped into the bolt manual, went down to the text section. And I grabbed the working area, which is 508 by 305 millimeters. I probably couldn't put in fake values, but I just thought, you know, in case it does do something, I wanted to make sure it was properly configured. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that information is needed for the program or for Lightburn to design perhaps your work area or perhaps there are other connections to it. Then I jump back into Lightburn. I fill out my X and Y axis. Click Next. And it's going to ask you for the origin. Again, I'm pretty sure this information is needed. And since I know what the origin is for the bolt, it's going to be rear left. I'll input that. So I didn't put in fake values. I just created a fake device. And here's your summary. Click Finish and it's done. There's my Ruida test device. I'm going to click OK. And you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it's disconnected. You'll see that right around the middle right. But in the very bottom, you'll see devices and there's my Ruida test. That's as simple and that's how quick it is to get it installed on your Mac. And now you can begin starting to design or to play and start to learn how Lightburn works, especially if you're like me and it's your first time using it. I'm going to put a link to the Lightburn YouTube channel down below in the description of this video. I found it immensely helpful. They have a playlist for beginners that starts right from the very most basic functions and it steps you through, I don't know how many dozen videos to teach you different functions and features of the, the software. It's pretty incredible actually. I've gone through several of them numerous times because this is the first time I've ever used a CAD or you know an Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop. I have no experience on any of these types of programs, so I'm looking forward to using it. If you're like me, you're going to want to drop Lightburn down onto your Mac and start working and playing with it right away while you're waiting for your laser to arrive. That way you'll have a little familiarity when it gets here and hopefully you'll be able to do at least a simple design to start with and send it to the laser and see it perform. And start watching that playlist for beginners. A lot of great information there. Thanks again for sticking around on LaserNug and I hope to see you again on the next one. Cheers.